It's March, and there's still snow left in a forest that's a testing ground for the future. I was here nearly eight months ago in August after the Cedar Creek fire had just burned through this stand, the ground still smoking. The sound of firefighting helicopters not far off. Oh, you can see what's out here, right? I was with forest managers Pat Ryan and Ken McNamee in a place named Virginia Ridge Unit 1, which had been deliberately thinned to 40 trees per acre, larger trees spaced out. It better resembles the natural landscape of a century ago, before generations of fire suppression resulted in forests becoming overgrown, chocked full of volatile brush and small trees. Now it's a landscape thought better equipped to survive wildfire and Ken McNamee carved through the thick bark of a singed ponderosa pine, bark that evolved to survive wildfire. You can feel that this is still moist right there. That's the cambium layer, and that's, that's the vascular system of the tree. Would that tree live into 2022? All right, we're back at our tree. Okay, what can we see here? I can tell you it feels moist. Pat Ryan is feeling hopeful. Um, so this tree is looking really good right now. I feel it's going to make it. And once again, the crown's looking real good. I don't see any red flags up there. We're starting to die back. Even now in March with snow still on the ground, the bark tells a story of last summer from this side of this ponderosa pine to the side that faced the fire. You can see the scar goes well above my head but the intensity not strong enough to kill these trees. But there is another forest, Virginia Ridge Unit 2, that did not fare so well. This stand was also thinned down to 40 trees per acre. The fire in particular burned here was, came across the slope and then made an uphill run. Upslope generated more heat and the trees just weren't able to withstand the intensity of the heat. Jake Townsend handled the thinning on this stand. You know, if you were to go up in there and look at crowns, they still have needles on them. They didn't physically burn, but it was just the intensity of the heat and the radiant heat is what, what cooked a lot of those trees. Townsend says the Cedar Creek fire raged here late in the afternoon when humidity was at its lowest, air temperatures at their highest, and making the situation even worse, the fire was moving uphill. As the Department of Natural Resources continues its analysis of these two stands of timber, that was a major difference from Unit 1, which was deliberately set on fire in the middle of the night in what's commonly referred to as a backfire to stop the advance of the Cedar Creek fire as it crept down the mountain heading toward homes. But you were here. I was here. What was that like? You know, it's tough. It's tough in all the different community meetings and, you know, with hundreds of different folks that are concerned and we have houses scattered all through here um, and you know we're doing doing the best we can to keep the fires away from communities. Andy Townsend, no relation to Jake, manages forests in Okanagan and part of Ferry counties. You can see from these drone pictures the fire wiped out the trees on the ridge line but did not wipe out the treated forest below. Every time we have timber sales each and every one of those gives us another another spot, another option to tie a road or a ridge to a fuels treatment and start to tie these different things together to be able to control fires wherever they might start. And this worked? This one worked, yeah. The fire in Unit 1 never made it past the road, never got close to homes. Unit 2, while in one sense was unsuccessful for the forest, also kept homes and buildings which were even closer from catching fire. But 2021 had something else going on, record high temperatures. Even at SeaTac Airport in typically much cooler western Washington, temperatures hit over 100 three days in a row in late June, topping out at an unheard of 108. It was even hotter over in the Metal Valley, Pat Ryan. Record temperatures, so things were stressed, trees were hurting, and you get the wind, and, you know, it's just that perfect storm is what happened last year. Could Unit 2 have been better off with fewer trees per acre? There are no firm answers yet, and the analysis will continue as state foresters and firefighters hone in on creating a fire-resistant forest in a climate-changing world. Near Winthrop, Glenn Farley, King 5 News.